What's up guys, it's Dudes Corner here. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to solve the CFOP method. Now, what is the CFOP method? How does it work? And how many algorithms are there? That's one of the most common questions. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the complete tutorial. And this is probably going to be a very long video. Now, in the description, you can go down there and see all the different parts for all four steps. And I'll walk through individual ones. It'll actually be the exact same videos in this tutorial as in that one. So it should be pretty easy to figure out where you're stuck. So you can just go down below and hit those videos because this is gonna be a very, very long video. So first off, what is CFOP? Well, CFOP stands for cross F2L, OLL, and PLL. Okay, so what does F2L stand for? F2L stands for first two layers, OLL stands for orientating last layer, and PLL stands for positioning last layer. There are only four steps for solving the cube, and I'm gonna quickly show you how our method is going to work. I'm gonna scramble this cube up and then show you. Okay, fully scrambled. And the first step that we're gonna to wanna to do is create the white cross on top. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now we have the white cross. Now we're gonna do F2L. F2L is when you build uh, your corner edge pair and you're gonna insert it into a slot and then it will solve the first two layers. And you're gonna have four pairs that you have to build. Okay, one pair in, two, three, four. And then for OLL, we're gonna do two algorithms to orientate all the yellow so that's on top. And then from here, we're gonna do one algorithm to solve the remains of the puzzle. Okay, so there's your demonstration solved. Now there's gonna be a lot, a lot of different steps. Well, not different steps, but a lot, a lot of different algorithms for solving this cube. And it may start to get a little crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the first step, which is the cross. Now I do have a tutorial that I do explain what cross is. It's uh, that video right there. And I do a kind of demonstration of how it works, but in this video, I'm gonna give you a little bit more of an idea of how the cross works. Um, I'm gonna give more example solves and give you a few more ideas of what you're gonna want to do for solving white cross. Um, and of course, lots of you probably did not come from my beginner's method that I used. If you want to see my beginner's method, the link of course will be down in the description where you can see how I originally taught it and then kind of understand where I'm going with this method. So, all right, let's go ahead and start with white cross. Now, lots of you probably with your beginner's method have learned to put all the white edges onto yellow center and which is the tulip or the daisy case. And then you would put the edges onto white's side. But in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to just put the white edges immediately onto white center. This saves a lot of time and definitely would recommend you guys using it. At first, it may seem a little hard, but if you just practice uh, it consistently, so like as soon as you solve the white cross, you just scramble it up and keep going, you'll try all kinds of different cases and then you'll come pretty good at it pretty quick. So it doesn't take too long to learn, just a lot of, just a bit of practice and then you'll be good. The first thing you're gonna wanna know is really know where your centers are. And when I mean know where your centers are, you have to know that blue is opposite of green, red's opposite of orange. This is, and where red and orange are. So you know when white's on top, red's gonna be on the left of blue and then orange is going to be on the right of blue. You kind of have to know where all the center placements are and it'll make it a little easier when you're inserting your edges. If you don't know where the centers really are that well, go ahead and quickly memorize it as best as you can because you're definitely going to need to know how to do it. So first off we have this white red edge and this is pretty simple. We can just go ahead and insert this into white center. Not too hard. 
Now we also have this orange one, and it's actually already lined up with its center. So we know that it needs to go up here. Now this red white one does not belong here. It belongs over here because orange is opposite of white. So we can just go ahead and rotate that twice, and then we can rotate this edge up on top. Now we have this blue and white one that we can line underneath. Now you should know this kind of case from the tulip or daisy uh, case that you learned in beginner's method, and you're just gonna rotate it twice. And then this edge here uh, sometimes can get a little difficult, but what you're gonna do, most people will think to line it up underneath the green center, but because white is facing out and not on bottom, you're gonna rotate it toward one of the centers away from green, and then you're gonna rotate the front so that way it lines up here. Now I know this does knock a edge piece out, but that's okay. Then you can bring this one up and then this one in just like that. And there you go, you've completed the cross. Now I'm gonna show you a few more examples because there is a lot of cases that you can have. Um, but one tip that you should know is that any cross case can be solved with eight moves or less. Now I realize lots of those cases can get very hard. Uh, I also realized that this wasn't eight moves for me when I was doing it, but I do know that in any situation you can solve it in eight moves or less. So try figuring it out as best as you can. It can get a little crazy. Now let's take a look at this case right here. As you can tell, we already have one edge right here. We have two more edges here and then one more edge right here. Now this is when it is very, very useful to learn where all of your centers are, uh, cause in this case it can get a little crazy. So we have this orange edge that can line up with this center here, and then we also have this green one that can automatically line up here. And the problem is, is also that we have this red one here, and we don't want to, we want to keep this up here and have it underneath its slot. Now the thing is, is if we just go ahead and align this edge up with its center, this edge it, you, it is going to be a little more difficult to get in as well as this one. And mainly because they're flipped and they're put in their right spot. So say we keep it here. What we can do is we can bring this orange one here, so it's already lined up, and then this one here. Now this does rotate the blue one up, but just ignore that. Now the thing is, is we might think, okay, let's go ahead and bring this one and this one up, but the thing is, is this red one is not where it belongs. So let's go ahead and line up the red one to where it belongs, which is right here. Then we can rotate these two edges up. Now, one other thing that sometimes people will think is, okay, let's go ahead and bring this green one up, but that's gonna bring this orange one out. So if we do the orange one first, like this, and then do the green one, this saves a lot of moves. And then we have this blue one here. It needs to go into here, so what we can do is we can rotate the top twice, and then insert the blue, and then turn the top twice back. And as you can see, we have solved the cross. Now let's take a look at this case. This case can be very interesting. We have this center already lined up and solved. This one needs to go over to here, and this orange one needs to go up here, and this blue one needs to go over here. This case can look a little strange. The question is, is how are we going to solve it? Because we already have one in, and then we have another one in that does not belong here. Well, there's a few ways that we can do this. Um, I know lots of the ways that actually I would do it. Lots of other cubers wouldn't do, so I'm not going to teach it that way. Um, so let's go ahead and bring this. We want to bring this orange one up to here. Generally, what people would do is they would just bring it up like this, which is fine. We can do it like that. And then um, we can rotate this blue one up into here. But here's the thing. These two are opposite of each other. Now, how are we going to fix this? Because we don't, we don't want them opposite of each other. Well, there is an easy algorithm that you can do to fix this. And this algorithm would be M2, U2, M2. And just that swaps them. Now, to just to remember, you got to have them uh, cross from each other, not up and down from each other, you know. So from here and here, not here and here and these two will swap. And there you go, that's how another way you can solve the cross. Another case that can commonly happen is when you've already completed the cross, but these two edges need to swap. Now this comes up every now and then if you've accidentally messed up the cross. And what you're gonna wanna do to fix this is you're gonna wanna insert this into here and then insert this one into here. So 
we can rotate this edge down, rotate the top, that way this slot is where we're reinserting. So like that, rotate the top back, and then bring this edge back up just like that. And then we've completed the cross. Now this is a little bit more of an advanced case that you might have to deal with, but I'll go ahead and show you how I would solve it. The problem is, is about cases like this, you probably don't, you probably won't recognize solving it like this, and that's okay. If you can learn on your own figuring out cross cases and just putting all the white edges on top on your own without, you know, having to get eight moves in less, you know, as long as if you get the edges, that's fine because you're just learning how to do this. You don't need to do any of the crazy advanced stuff, but I still thought I would show you one case. Now we have this edge here that needs to go over here, this edge that needs to go over here, this edge that needs to go here, and this one that needs to go here. All of these are flipped in one wrong way or another. Now, how are we gonna solve this? Well, what I would do is I would bring this down, that way it's lined up with the center. Now this one, we might as well go ahead and line up with its center over here. So that way I notice that I have two pairs already done. Now this edge, we can already go ahead and bring up, and then we can line it up underneath, not underneath, but where its center is, so back here. Then we have these two, and to, we can go ahead and bring this one up first, because if we bring this one up first, its blue center will be over, blue edge will be over here. And we don't want this edge over here, we want it to be lined up with its center. So we'll insert it up first, then we'll bring this set edge up. Then we have this last one here, and its center is over here, so what we can do is we can just rotate the cross out of the way, bring this up, and then turn the top back, and we have solved our white cross. So once again, this is a little bit more of an advanced case, and it gets kind of hard to recognize which uh, edges you should go first, but just practice the you know simple stuff, um, and then you'll be good. If, it's, if you can't understand what the advanced is from the not advanced stuff, if you're having trouble solving that case, it's advanced. <laughs> now we can have a case like this. Now we have one edge already solved, this one and this one are where they belong, just flipped. And then this one that needs to go easily inserted. So first thing that I would do is just go ahead and insert this edge because that's pretty simple. Now we have these two that don't belong here. Well, they do belong here, they're just not correctly twisted. So what we can do is we can rotate this one out like this. But we can also rotate this one out over here like this. The reason why we can do this is because when we turn the top and insert these edges in, we put them both in at the same time, and then we can turn the top back and solve the cross. So this is sometimes that can happen, having the two edges uh, flipped on the cross. It doesn't happen very often, um, but this is just an easy way for fixing that case. Now this case here is for particularly order. Now what I mean by this is, is how, which edge pieces you should put in first. Now there is a way you can solve this cross using only five moves. Um, and the thing is, is you gotta know which ones you do first. So generally people might think, okay, this is already lined up here, so we can just go ahead and insert it. But then you have these edges all the way over here, which could get a little crazy with inserting. So, what you can do is you gotta know which edges you should put in first. Now, I can line this edge up into here. I could also line this edge up into here, or I could go ahead and insert this one. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go ahead and line this one up, and then I can go ahead and line this one up, and then I can insert this one first, because if I insert this one, this edge will come over to here. So do that then I insert this one, and then the last edge, which is here. And in five minutes, you can easily solve it across. So generally, you'll have to figure out which ones you should do first to save moves, because you don't want to just use pointless moves when there's faster ways of doing it. It can get a little crazy recognizing what you should do first, but just kind of take it slow. Um, I would definitely recommend not timing yourself when you're doing this. You know, just kind of sit down and just figure it out, take your time, and you know solve the cross as however much time you need all right so that is how you solve cross now let's go on to f2l
Let's start off by asking what is F2L? F2L means first two layers. So the way this step is going to work is you're going to build a corner and an edge pair and then insert them at the same time as though you would insert a corner in the beginner's method and solve the first two layers at once. This saves a lot of time and I would definitely recommend using it. Uh, it's definitely gonna be hard to learn how to solve. I attempted solving it many times, like learning how to solve it, but I never could really figure it out until I found like the right tutorial. Um, so it's definitely gonna seem challenging and almost gonna seem like it's not worth learning, but I tell you that this is the number one thing that you have to learn to use. Because I thought that I didn't need it, um, but this makes you improve so much when you're speed solving. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing that I want to note is that for this entire video, I'm going to be focusing on just this red and ed red and blue edge and this red, blue, and white corner. So these this will be the pair that I'm always going to be focusing on. The first thing you're going to want to know is that there are two ways that you could insert a corner. Now, I taught uh, that when you'd have this corner here, that you would bring the right side down, turn the bottom, and then insert it up like that. But there is another way you can also insert, and this way is from turning away from this side, bringing this, the front side down, bringing it up like that, and then inserting. So there's a few ways you can do this for inserting corners. Those are the two main ways. So just keep that in mind because when inserting your F2L pair, um, you may have to insert from either one of the cases. One of the things you should also know is that you can sometimes be you building from the left or you can sometimes be building from the right. So that's why sometimes you'll have to insert a different way for the corner because one is specifically for the left and one is specifically for the right. So just keep that in mind for this video. The first thing you're going to want to learn is how to insert the pair. Now, as you can see, I've already have the pair built and I'll show you later on on how to build the pair. And what you're going to want to do to insert this, now what you might think is insert the corner how we would before, so like this, but that breaks up the edge, so we don't want to do that. So to insert this, we're gonna insert it from the other side, like I showed you before with inserting the corner. So I'll pull this away from the slot, bring this side up, insert it just like that. The other case that you can have is when you need to insert the pair from the opposite side. So when you try to insert it using this side, it breaks up the pair, so we don't wanna do that. Instead, we'll have to insert from this side Bring this up, insert the pair in like that, and then bring this back down. And then as you can see, we've created our bar. Now let's start off with the easiest case that can come up. Now I'm gonna start off by explaining having your corner, uh, you're gonna always wanna have the corner underneath its slot, and then you're gonna wanna have wherever the edge is, it depends on where the edge is. So I'm gonna start off by explaining with the edge on top. Now there are three main cases that you'll have to learn and then three other cases that I will explain. So let's start off by saying that we have opposite colors. So opposite colors is when you look at the top, here's the two pieces. You have blue and red. These are two different colors. So this means that they're not matching. So there's either going to be matching, opposite, or one or the piece is white. These ones are opposite. Now here's what you're gonna to wanna to do. The opposite one, when they're in this position where the white is over here and the edge is here, sometimes the edge will be here and the white is here. Uh, it does depend on the case. Um, so let's start off with the edge being here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to pair them just like this. It's, it's pretty simple. As you can see, you can just pair them up like that. And this turns the slot open. You can just insert and then bring it down just like that. Very, very simple. Um, I know there's a lot more cases. I'll get into those. Um, and if the edge was here, I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, other times you'll have the opposite colors, um, except the edge is here and the corner white piece is facing out here. If you have this, then you have to rotate this side instead. 
See, this is when you have to build using the, the right side instead of the left. So I showed you the left, now this is building from the light, right. And this is gonna work the exact same way, okay? There's nothing different except just using different sides. And you're gonna insert it from this side. So if you think about it, we can just pair them up like this, insert in here, and then bring this back down just like that. This case is when you have the colors matching this time. Now, when they're matching, this is not too hard. Um, you're gonna end up, this is actually considered inserting from the right. I know it doesn't seem like that, but I'll show you how it's gonna work. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna rotate the corner over here. So you're gonna hold the cube like this and you're gonna rotate that way you can still see the white of the corner. If I was doing it like this, I can't see the white, but over here I can. So over here, you're gonna rotate this back, okay? That way the corner's out of the way. Now you can freely move this edge however you want because it's not gonna mess up this corner. And you're gonna line it up back here because the corner was over here where we had it last. Then when we bring this up, we would have built our pair. And then to insert it, we're gonna bring this side up, make sure the bar's out of the way. Bring it in just like that, and then down. There you go. The other case of this is when the edge is up here instead of being here. Now, this is actually gonna work the exact same way, so don't get tripped up about it. You're just going to bring the corner away because you don't wanna see the white. And then when you bring it back, you only have to turn this once instead of twice, so it's not really anything different. And then you're gonna bring this over here again, bring this side up, that way you can insert it. Now, if we were to bring this up, it would break the pair, so we don't wanna do that. We're gonna to wanna to bring this one up and then insert and then back down. Now, this is another case you can have, and this is actually the exact same case as before, except you're doing it from the left. Now, these are similar pairs. So they're matching, as you can see. And you're gonna hold it like this again. And this spot, you can see the white. Now if we do this, we can't see the white. But if we bring it over here, we can see it. So this is where we're gonna wanna have it. And you're gonna once again bring this out of the way. Bring this pair edge over. Bring this back up. And then insert it from this angle. So there are two different ways you can have it. It depends, so sometimes you'll have to insert it from this side and then sometimes you have to insert it from this side. It does depend on where the corner and edge are, so be sure to look out for that. Now here's the other version of that exact same case as I showed you before, is when instead the edge from, is not here, it's over here. And once again, this is gonna work the exact same way, so don't get tripped up about it. So you're gonna hold it like this, and I can see the white over here, and I can't see the white over here. So you're gonna have it back here. And once again, you're gonna rotate this out of the way. And this time you're not gonna be able to turn it once because it's not bringing the edge toward the back where the corner is. You're gonna bring it toward the back where the corner is and then pair it. And then you're gonna insert it from this angle. Now this was the other case that I was going to tell you guys about. Now I mentioned it just a little while ago is when you have opposite colors but instead the, from the edge being here, the edge is over here. Now I'm gonna show you quickly how to solve this. What you're gonna do is you're actually going to bring this corner back over to here, okay? And then you're gonna rotate this out of the way, that way you can fix this edge back down. Then you're going to solve this case here, which is what we had earlier, how we have matching pairs. So you're gonna rotate this back and then, because this is where we can see the white, rotate this back, bring the edge over to here, that way it's next to the corner, that way when we bring this up, they're paired. And we're just gonna insert it over to here, just like that. Now this is the other common case that I was telling you about, since there were three cases. Now I showed you the first two, now this is the other one, and this is when the corner is on top. This is actually not that hard, as hard as it may seem. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the edge in the corner and what you're, you're gonna pair up this edge with its center. So right here, it is matching. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna pull it away from the slots. And this, this is the slot, you're pulling it away. 
Then you can bring the corner over here and pair it. Bring this edge back down and they are paired and then you can insert as I've shown before. Now here's the other case that you can have, how you have the edge and the corner and the white is up, is when you pair it and you have to pull it away, you actually have to turn the corner twice so that it's over to here. And then what you're gonna do is bring this down. So the only difference of this case is that you have to turn it twice rather than once because the corner was here instead of here. And then what you're gonna do is just insert this edge shown as before. Now here's the other case that you can have is when this edge is actually flipped the other way. And you're gonna line it up matching with its center, so right here. And instead of pulling it this way, because this is where the slot is, you have to pull it away from the slot. And then you're gonna bring this corner over, set there paired, bring this edge back, and then insert this as we regularly would. So just like that. Now, as I explained before, there are three other cases that I said that I would explain later on, and these are these three. Now, the first case is when you have your two pieces already paired together, except not correctly twisted. So, you're either going to have the pieces here and here, or here and here. Either way, it does not matter. You're always just going to have the corner underneath its slot. And you're going to perform an algorithm, and it's pretty simple. Um, you're just going to do, make sure that the corner's here and you're holding the cube in this specific angle, so not like this. Make sure you're like this, so that the corner's on this side. The edge can be here and here, it doesn't matter. And the algorithm is R, U2, R prime. And just like that. And then you're gonna just solve this pair that you, I've showed before, which is make sure you can't see the white, which is actually here. Rotate this corner out of the way bring this edge that it would pair up, and then insert the pair. Now, like I said before, there are a lot of these cases, and I'm just gonna quickly show you the other case, how you can have the edge over here. Now, once again, these pieces could be twisted differently, as well as even if they're here, there's a lot of different ones. But as long as if the corner's underneath its slot and you're holding it from this position, you're good. And you're just gonna perform the algorithm as I showed before, which is R, U2, R prime. In this case, we got the similar one that we had last time, except instead we have to bring the corner over to here so that we can, we can see the white. Bring this back, bring the edge over to here, repair them up here, and then reinsert just like that. The next common thing that you can have is when you have the corner already in its slot. If you have this, that's fine. You're just gonna do the beginner's method of how to insert this edge into here. So just like that. Now, if the corner is down here and it's not correctly twisted and you don't have an edge in here, how you're gonna fix this is you're actually gonna do the same algorithm as I showed you before, except you're gonna wanna make sure that the edge is in the back, so back here, not in any of the other spots. And hold from the exact same position, you're gonna perform the exact same algorithm, which is R, U2, R prime. And you're gonna just solve this case, which these are opposite colors and this is a three move one, so you're just going to pair them up like this, insert, and then bring them down. Now this is the last case I said that I would explain, and that's if the edge is already in here. So instead of the corner being in here, the edge is in here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to do a very similar algorithm as the one before, except you're gonna have the corner over here and have the edge here. Make sure you're holding from the right side and you're going to do R, U, R prime. So instead of R, U, 2, R prime, it's R, U, R prime. And then you're gonna solve this case, which this one is uh, pairing them, insert, and then bring them back. Now those last three cases that I showed you, there are a lot of different situations that can come up, but don't worry about the twisted or position of the corner of the edge, it just matters where they actually are in the puzzle, and then just perform the algorithms as I showed. Now, one other thing that I should mention is sometimes you'll have a corner in and an edge in, and they're in two different slots and they're not on top. This can happen a lot. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take one of them out, so hold one of them on the right side. So let's just do the edge. You can do the corner, it doesn't matter. And you'll just do R, U, R prime. So the algorithm I showed before, you can do that with the corner too. And then you're just gonna insert this edge in here. So same way we did before. Now, if you took the corner out, You'll have to do the same way I showed you to take the 
edge out with the corner on top. Just that same case as before. But if you do the edge, then you'll have to perform the algorithm for inserting it that I showed in the beginner's method, so like that. Now just real quick, I wanted to show what would happen if you took the corner out first, just to give you guys an idea, which would be the same algorithm, make sure it's on the right, R, U, R prime. And then you would have it over here, and then you would do the algorithm to get the edge out, which is R, U, R prime. And then you would have this case, so you have similar pairs, line underneath the slot, make sure you can see the white, bring it back, line the edge underneath where that way when you can repair the corner and then insert the pair just like that. Okay, sorry about the new angle and lighting. My camera ran out of storage so I had to back it up and now I am have a new angle. But anyway, let's go ahead on. The next case that you can commonly have is if the corner is in a different slot um, instead of being underneath the slot where it needs to be. And to do this, you're just going to do the exact same thing we would do before, if it, except if it was in here. So you have the edge in the back and just do R, U2, R prime, and then you would just solve this case. The other thing you can commonly get is if you have the edge also in the wrong spot, that's fine too. You're just gonna do what you would do if the edge was in here and you just have the corner here, do R, U, R prime, and then just solve this case. Okay, so the last few things that you need to know for F2L is if you already have the pair made. And there's a few times where this can happen. First common one is if it's in the slot except not in the correct position. And to do this, you're just going to do, hold, make sure you're holding from this side, that way the slot's on the right, and you're just doing R, U2, R prime. And then you would just insert it as normal. So just like that. The other common case is if the corner and edge pair is in a different slot, you just, to get this out, you just do R, U2, R prime, and then just insert this pair. And then of course you can always have it on a different slot instead of being in here that it's going up, and you would just do what you would do before from the other case, which is R, U2, R prime, and then just solve this case. One other thing that I should just quickly touch on, um, I don't really have to show anything, I just want to explain that even if you have all your other pairs done and you're just working on your last one, all of these different algorithms and cases that I showed you, you don't have to worry about um, performing if you have all of them done, it's not going to interact with them, so you'll be good. Okay, so for beginners, OLL, and PLL, there's going to be a total of eight algorithms. There'll be four for OLL and four for PLL. And the two algorithms for, two of the algorithms for PLL are going to be kind of long, but believe me, they're not too hard to memorize. So the first thing you have to know is, lots of you in beginners know that probably already know this, but I'm still going to go ahead and go through how to get the yellow cross on top. If you already know this, go ahead and skip to that part of the video, because I'm sure lots of you already know how to do this. So let's go ahead and start. This is the angle. You can also have a line, a dot, or a cross. For the angle case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it into this position so that these two edges are here and here. So you can't hold it like this, not like that, just always like this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the front two layers, so lowercase f, right algorithm, or r, u, r prime, u prime, and then lowercase f prime. And you have the cross. Now if you have the line, where these two edges are here and here, you're just going to hold it horizontal. So anything but this. You can hold it like this, that's fine, still horizontal, just mainly like this. It doesn't really matter which way. And then what you're going to do is similar to the last one, except it's going to be capital F, so just the front layer, right algorithm, or R, U, R prime, U prime, and then F prime. There you go, you got the cross. Now for the dot. The dot is its particular own particular case because um, you have to do two cases at once. So you're going to do the line case and you're going to do the angle case. For the dot, you're just going to do F, our right algorithm, F prime, and then you have the angle, which is lowercase f, right algorithm, lowercase f prime. And then you got the angle, sorry, the cross. So you do the line, for the dot, you do the line case, then you do the angle case, and then you'll have the cross. 
Now there are seven different cases that we can have here for the corners. Now I'm gonna show you two particular main cases that you'll need to know, and these are the two other algorithms. You're gonna have the right case, or you're going to have the left case. So you have the right algorithm, left algorithm, well this is the right case and the left case. So the right case is, the right and the left case are when you have one corner and three corners need to be positioned. And actually all of the ones that have three corners that need to be positioned are either is either going to be the right case or the left case. So the way this is going to work, the solved corner you're going to have at the bottom down here, okay? And you're going to either have it here or here. The way you need to tell which one it is is if you can see yellow. So here you can see yellow. This one you can't see yellow. So this means we this is the one case we have to do. This is the right case. If you can see yellow here, this would be considered the left case. So to do this one, the right case would be R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. And as you can see, all yellow is on top. Now here's an example of the left case. So we need to have the yellow corner down at the bottom. When we hold it here, we can't see yellow here, but when it's here, we can see yellow. So this is when we have the left case. It's gonna work very similar. It's going to be L prime, U prime, L, U, L prime, U2, L prime. Sorry, actually that's L. And there you go. All of the yellow is on top. Okay, now I'm gonna go through a bunch of two corner cases. We went through a bunch of three, so now we're gonna go through a bunch of two. And what you're gonna do is, you're, you're, this case is when you have one facing this way and one facing that way and you're gonna hold it like this. So it's gonna be on your left side, and you're gonna perform the right case, so R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. And as you can see, you're already set up for the left because the corner's down here and the yellow sticker's here. So L prime, U prime, L, U prime, L prime. No, yeah, U2, L. Sorry, I get a little tripped up with the primes and stuff, but as you can see, yellow's on top. The next two corner cases when they are di diagonal, and this is the only time that this one will pop up, and you need to hold it like this, how you see the yellow one facing towards you and the one in the back over here. It kind of gets a little tricky to recognize what, how to hold it, but this is how you're gonna have to hold it, try to remember that. And you're gonna perform the right case, so R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. And bring the, we can't see L here with the corner here, so bring this back, then we can. And we have the last left case, which is L prime, U prime, L, U prime, L prime, U2, L prime. L, sorry. See, I keep messing up on that. But as you can see, yellow's all on top. The last two corner case is when you have two headlights, so they're just facing towards you. So instead of them being out here and here, they're here and here. And to do this, you would hold it like this, so that they're in front, both the headlights are in front. And you're going to perform the right case, which is R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. Bring the corner back. Can't see L here. We can see it here. So left case, L prime, U prime, L, U prime, L prime, U2, L. And as you see, all yellow's on top. I actually didn't mess up the primes that time. Yes. Now we're going to go into four corner cases. And there are only two of these. And this is the first one, how you have headlights here, and then two across from here and here. And how you're gonna do this is you're gonna hold it into this position. So the two going out this way and your headlights on the left, and you'll perform the right case. So R, U, R prime, U, R, U, two, R prime. And then bring the corner toward the back. And as you can see, we have the right case again. So R, U, R prime, U, prime, U, R, U, two, R prime. And as you see, all yellow's on top. The very last algorithm for beginners OLL is when you have the two headlights going on opposite directions and you're gonna hold it like this so that they're going from right and left and perform the right case. So R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. And as you can see, we have the right case again. So R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime. And as you can see, all yellow is on top. The first thing that I want to say real quick is 
Um, now we're gonna go head on to PLL and two of the algorithms are gonna be crazy So we're gonna start off with the edge swapping now You you probably have your own algorithm for this in your beginners method and if you do that's fine Go ahead and use it. It doesn't make too much a difference, but I'm just gonna quickly explain using um, The method that I used I do have you if you guys have probably seen my advance off of beginners method that tutorial up there You probably have an idea of where I'm going with this um so I'm gonna do it a little differently. So as we could tell, I explained in that video that the edge, when it needs to go over here, will have to perform the at one algorithm twice, but instead I'm gonna do it a little differently. So here's the algorithm. Left algorithm, right algorithm, reverse left, and reverse right. And then the cube is solved. And the way I knew that, once again, is if this edge here needed to go over here and you're facing your solved side. And then of course the other case is when the edge needs to go over to here when you're facing your solve side. And this version is when you start with the right algorithm. So right algorithm, left algorithm, reverse right, and then reverse left. And of course, just a quick reminder, right algorithm is R U R prime U prime, and left algorithm is L prime U prime L U. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to what if your corners are swapped. And this can get a little crazy. So either you're gonna have a pair of headlights, so two that are matching, or you're gonna have none matching. If you have none matching, that means you have to swap diagonally. If you do have some matching, that means these two have to swap. So as we can tell, these two do need to swap. And the two that, when you have just two that are across from each other that need to swap, you're gonna hold them on your right side. And if they need to swap diagonal, it doesn't matter where you hold. Now here is for swapping across. Now, real quick, this is a long, longer algorithm. It's called the T-perm. And the T-perm is very well known, and you need to memorize it. It's going to be used for lots of advanced methods. So here it is. R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R2, U prime, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, F prime. And as you can see, the corners are all now where they belong. And then of course you would just perform this case, which I do explain um, in that video once again, but I'll just quickly go through it again. Um, you would just perform either one of the two cases. So right algorithm, left algorithm, reverse right, reverse left. And then you would have this case, how this edge needs to go to here, which is the right algorithm, left algorithm, reverse right and reverse left. And then the cube is solved. Now let's take a look at this one. As you can see, we have no corners that are matching, and the, that means we have to swap diagonally. So it actually doesn't matter. We could swap these two, we could swap these two, it doesn't matter. You're, um, you're just gonna hold from a side, and then this next algorithm again is long, but it's called the Y perm. And the Y perm is very, very, very much needed. Sorry, bad grammar. Um, but you have to learn it, because in any advanced methods, it's really well used, and it's really good. So. Here's the algorithm. F, R, U prime, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, F prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, R, F prime. And as you can see, all of the corners are where they belong. And then of course you have this case, um, which is these two and these two that need to swap. I do explain an easier algorithm on this in that tutorial once again. Sorry, I keep I keep bringing that up. I need to stop showing that picture. You guys see the picture. You know you know that. Um, and um, which is the M move one. But if you don't know that, that's fine. We don't have to teach that. Uh, this case, you could just do right algorithm, left algorithm, reverse right, reverse left, and then um, you would just solve this case, which is right algorithm left algorithm reverse right and then reverse left and then there you go so that is how you solve uh the rubik's cube beginners oll and beginners pll now for first off for that beginners pll i'm sure that did seem a little bit confusing um just know which ways you have to swap for that like horizontal and then which ones when you need to swap diagonal just try to remember that remember for horizontal you're swapping from the right diagonal it doesn't matter and then for the other two PLL algorithms, it's just reverse right, reverse left, the different, those forms, you, you know what I mean.
Now, let's start off by asking what is OLL? OLL is orientating the last layer. This is the third step into the CFOP method. And what you're doing is you're gonna take all the pieces on the last layer and orientate them that way all yells on top. There is gonna be 10 algorithms in this tutorial and they're all not too bad. Um, just kind of, yeah, they're, they're simple to memorize and I'll go through and explain all of them as best as I can. Um, and three of them, actually technically I think two, no, technically three. Three of them you already you should know from beginner's methods of some kind that you've been taught. Doesn't really necessarily have to be my beginner's method, but you should know a bit about them. So, all right, let's go ahead and get onto it. The first thing that you have to learn is to solve the yellow cross on top. Now, to solve the yellow cross, you probably, all you guys in the beginner's method already know this uh, step to get the yellow cross. If you do, you can just go ahead and skip to that part of the video. It should save you some time, but I'm still gonna go through it just in case, because I'm sure some people have some kind of method that didn't taught them this, but you never know, so I'll just go ahead and explain it. And real quick, one other thing before you cubers jump to the one portion of the video. If you thought this was the full OLL method, it's not. Um, I do know all the algorithms, but I really don't wanna go through them. I believe there's 57 algorithms. Cubers, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but basically what o full OLL is, is you solve all yellow on top with one algorithm, including without the yellow cross. And there's a lot of crazy algorithms. It took a while for me to memorize. But anyway, let's go ahead and focus on what we're talking about here for this um, method. And it's to get the yellow cross. Now, the first thing is that we'll notice is we're not gonna focus on the corners. I realize that we do have a corner here, but don't worry about that, just focus on the edges. So there are four different cases you can have for the edges. You're either gonna have the two here, which is called the angle, the line, which is the two here and here, a dot, which means there's just no edges at all, or all the edges, which is the cross. You can never just have one. Now, let's go ahead and do this case. Now, real quick, you all will need to know what the right and the left algorithm are. The right algorithm is just R, U, R prime, U prime, and the left algorithm is just L prime, U prime, L, U. I could really need the left algorithm for this tutorial, but just thought I would still include it. Now let's go ahead and do this algorithm. So what it is, it, you're gonna hold it like this, okay? So not like this, not like this, not like this, like this. And you're gonna do lowercase f, and lowercase means turn the front two layers, perform the right algorithm, so r, u, r prime, u prime, and then turn the front two layers back, so lowercase f prime. As you can see, we got the cross. We actually also have two corners, but don't worry about that, just focus on the edges. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next case. And that next case would be the line. Now the line is very, very similar to the angle, except instead of turning the front two layers, you're just gonna turn the front one layer. So turn the front layer and perform the right algorithm, which is R, U, R prime, U prime, and then turn the front layer back, so F prime. And there you go, you got the cross, and time to move on to the dot. And the dot is actually not as hard as it may seem, because you're gonna have to perform the line algorithm, and then you're gonna perform the angle algorithm. So I'll quickly show you what that means. So let's say we hold it from here. To do this, you would just do the line algorithm, which is F, right algorithm, F prime. And as you can see, we have the angle, and the angle would be lowercase f, right algorithm, lowercase f prime. As you can see, we got the cross. Now let's go ahead and move on to all the different algorithms for the corners. Now, since this is the case that we have, this, is, this one's considered the right case, and I'll show you how to know if you have it. You're gonna have the corner down at the bottom, and what you're gonna do is, say if you have it here, you can't see yellow here. You wanna be able to see yellow. So instead, if we move it over here, we can see yellow. So this means we know it's the right case because this piece is on our right side. If yellow was here, this would be considered the left case because we know that the yellow is on the left side. So to do this algorithm, it's going to be R, U, R prime, U, R, U two, R prime. As you can see, all yellow is on top. Now let's go on to the left case, as I'm sure you could already guess. And let's move this corner down to the bottom. And when it's here, we can't see the yellow here. So it means we don't have the right case. But if we move it to here, then we see yellow here. So this is the left case. And the left case is very similar to the right case. It is L prime, U prime, 
L, U prime, L prime, U2, L. And as you see, all yellow is on top. Now let's go ahead and move on to two corner cases. The left and the right case are the only ones that revolve three corners, so let's go ahead and move on to two. The first one is this one, is when you have one yellow going this way and the other one going that way. And to do this, you're gonna hold it like this and you're gonna turn toward the bottom, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to do this algorithm, which is R prime, F prime, L, F prime, F, R, F prime, L prime, F. And as you see, all yellow is on top. The next algorithm, which is very similar to the other one, is when you have headlights instead of one here and one here. This algorithm, t t lots of people tend to not like, so sorry if you don't like it. There's lots of different ways you could do it, but generally this is the best one. Um, and it is going to be R2, D, R prime, U, yeah, U2, R, D prime, R prime, U2, R prime. As you see, all yellow's on top. Sorry if I was getting a little uh, tripped up on saying that algorithm. Um, I don't really remember notation on all of these. I'm kind of just figuring out as I go along, but those are the algorithms. All right, so the last two corner case is when they're diagonal, and these are the only ones that'll ever be diagonal. And it kind of gets hard to recognize which way you're supposed to hold it from, but you're gonna hold it like this. So corner here on your left going out. So there's no other way you can get that with the other corner. So corners here, yellow is facing towards you on the left. And this algorithm you're gonna hold from the bottom and it's gonna be F, R prime, F prime, L, F, R, F prime, L prime. And as you can see, all yellow is on top. The next case, which is when you have four corners, and there's only two four corner cases, is when you have yellow facing here and yellow facing here. And then you have headlights going out this way. You're gonna hold it like this so that your headlights are on your left and the two are that are across from each other are on your right. And this is actually pretty similar to the angle and the line algorithm. Um, you're gonna do lowercase f, right algorithm, r u r prime, u prime, and then you're gonna turn the middle back, so like this way. I don't remember the notation on that, but just bring that back. And then you're going to do the right algorithm again, R, U, R prime, U prime, and then lowercase f prime. Um, another way for understanding that move that I just did, you can technically just do, which I wrote up there because I came to mind just now, is that you bring the lowercase f back and then turn the front. Um, so that's just one way. Anyway, yellow's all on top. Let's go on to the last case. Okay, here's the last case is when you have two headlights and they're going across from each other and you're going to hold it like this, okay? So that they're on your right and your left. And this algorithm is not too hard. Um, it's going to be R, U, R prime, U, R, U prime, R prime, U, R, U two, R prime. And as you can see, all yellow's on top. And there you go. That is the full beginner's method for OLL. So this is. Now, there are 21 different PLL algorithms, and I'll go through all of them for you. One thing I want to mention real quick is that I don't remember the names of which ones were number one version, number two version. For all you that are new at this, you probably have no idea what you mean, what I mean, but you'll understand pretty soon. I'll have the list of number one or version number version one or version two of the algorithm listed up there, as well as the picture of the algorithm and the notation for the algorithm. I am not going to be saying any of the notation for this because I don't remember all of it. Most of it just becomes muscle memory. So I'll perform the algorithm slowly. Um, I'll make it, I'll make it slow. Uh, and then I'll have the algorithm listed right up there for you guys. That way you can see what the algorithm is. Um, so that way when I'm performing the algorithm, you can see how it works and then also have the algorithm listed in front of you. And one other thing is that I will be performing these algorithms in, in how I memorize them. So they're going to be in the exact order of how I learned them. So anyway, let's go ahead and get on to it. The very first one is the T-perm. 
and this is when these two edges need to swap and these two corners need to swap. And it looks like this. Next up, we have the Y perm when this corner and this corner need to swap and these two edges need to swap. And it looks like this. Next up, we have one of the U perms. I don't remember which one this is, but this is when the edge needs to go over to here, this one needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here, and it looks like this. The next algorithm is when this edge needs to go to here, this one needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here, and it looks like this. The next algorithm is the H perm, when these edges and these edges need to swap, and it looks like this. The next algorithm is the Z perm, when these edges and these edges need to swap, and it looks like this. The next algorithm, which is the J-perm, when these two corners and these edges need to swap, and it looks like this. The next algorithm is the L-perm, and is when these corners and these edges need to swap, and it looks like this. The next algorithm, which is the V-perm, when these two edges and these two corners need to swap, which is one of the algorithms that most people don't like, looks like this. The next algorithm is one of the A-perms. I don't remember which A-perm this is, but this is when this corner needs to go to here, this corner needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here. This algorithm looks like this, and you hold it from the bottom. The next algorithm is the F perm, when these two corners and these two edges need to swap, and it looks like this. The other A perm, which I don't remember which one this one is, is when this corner needs to go to here, this one needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here. This algorithm, holding from the bottom, looks like this. The next algorithm, which is one of the R perms, I don't remember which R perm this is, is when these two corners need to swap and these two edges need to swap. This algorithm looks like this. The other R perm algorithm, which I also don't remember which one this one is, is when these two edges need to swap and these two corners need to swap. It looks like this. The next algorithm, which is one of the end perms, which is when this corner and this corner need to swap and these two edges need to swap, it looks like this.
The next algorithm, which is another one of the end perms, is when these two edges need to swap and these two corners need to swap. This algorithm looks like this. The next algorithm, which is the E-perm, which is one that tends to get hard to recognize, is when this edge and this edge need to swap, and this edge and this edge need to swap. This one, you hold from the bottom, and looks like this. The last four algorithms are all G-perms and tend to be ones that lots of people don't like and get very hard to recognize. And I don't remember which ones are which, but this G-perm is when this edge needs to go to here, this edge needs to go to here, this corner needs to go down to here, this one needs to go to here, and this needs to go to here. This algorithm looks like this. Turn face. The next G perm is when this corner needs to go to here, this one needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here, and this edge needs to go to here, this edge needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here. This algorithm looks like this. Turn face. The next G perm is this one, when the corner, this corner needs to go to here, this one needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here, and this edge needs to go here, this one needs to go here, and this one needs to go here. This algorithm will look like this. Turn face. The last G perm and the last PLL is another G perm, and it's when this edge needs to go to here, and this one needs to go here, and this one needs to go here, and this corner needs to go to there, and this one needs to go to here, and this one needs to go to here. This algorithm will look like this. Turn face. All right, that is the entire CFOP method. I don't think any of you probably like stayed for the entire video, which is fine. If you did, you're amazing. I am surprised that you even stayed that long because this is a massive tutorial. Um, most of you probably just ended up looking up the separate tutorials that I've already made because I'm actually just taking footage from my other ones and just making it all one long tutorial. Um, but if you want to see individual parts, just a reminder in links in the description to go and check those out. Anyway, if you have any questions, which I'm sure you might have a lot, uh, feel free to answer them, ask them down in the questions. I'll tr in questions in the comment section. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to get around to all of them, but I'm sure other cubers can help answer some of them. Um, and this is a, f most of it was beginner's method on some of these algorithms. I know there's a lot more advanced on all kinds of different cases. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you found this video helpful, please, please hit that like button down below. I spent a lot of time making this tutorial and I hope you found it helpful. And please hit the subscribe button as well as those bell notifications to be notified when upcoming videos are released because there will be more coming out pretty soon. Um... And yeah, wow, this is probably going to be one of the longest videos on my channel for quite a while. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.